Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. We are welding acrylic. I know you're going to have a lot of questions and I'm going to try to answer everything. If I don't answer it, just leave a comment. Of course, this isn't Twitter, so be human. You're talking to a human here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I did a lot of testing. I, I was, uh, I do have a long history of making signs and different things in acrylic. I used to have access to a couple of 150 watt CO2 lasers and I made signs for maker spaces and different things. And it was amazing. You could do so much stuff and I would have to glue the acrylic together. And honestly, it, a lot of times it just didn't look good. It would leave glue residue or maybe I did a mirror. And when you shined a light behind it or something, you could see the glue marks. There was a lot of reasons why working with the glue was difficult. And then, you know, as I'm coming across this not long ago, I see a couple of videos on how to weld acrylic just by putting the layers together and running the laser. And first question a lot of you are going to have, will this work on a diode laser? I don't know. I have my CO2 set up right now. I can't really do it on my diode. Now, of course, you can't do clear or transparent acrylic on a diode laser. So will this be as useful? A lot of the reasons you're going to want to use it is so that you can make these signs, this backlighting, or when you do it with clear or a, you know, semi-transparent uh, light acrylic, the light hits it from behind and really just brings that out. A lot of the signs that you're going to see in the uh, mall or something like that, even your really, really high-end signs, are going to be made with this basic way of doing it. Now, a lot of times they're made with the CNC and they make a channel in the clear or the uh, frosty acrylic and they put LEDs in those. Now, use your imagination. You could do the same thing with a diode laser. Uh, so there, this is completely possible to make this. In fact, I will end up doing some tests but I wanted to get this out to everyone so that they could kind of start thinking about it too. If you have a CO2 laser, uh, that's mainly these couple of videos that I watched and I learned a lot so that I could show you how I think it is best to do it. And as you can see here, this is my logo and I put a piece of silver acrylic on the top and a clear on the back. And when you put it on a wall or something and the light hits it, it just really pops, right? So it does make a huge difference. It's super easy. It's way better than glue. And uh, we'll get to the process, right? I'll just try and do that immediately. Now, the videos that I watched, I will put below, but I'm going to give you the really short version of it. And then you can go learn more and more about how maybe they made mistakes. I'm trying to overcome those myself in this video in much easier ways than they did. Uh, first thing that I, I learned is, you know, you don't want one of the layers to be too thin. I think a 32nd is probably fine. And you could get, I, I get all my acrylic from craft closet. So I'm using three millimeter here, but just because that's what I buy most of and what I use most of, but you can, you know, put a quarter and a 32nd together or something like that, if it makes sense to you. And it may look really, really good. I have, again, I have a lot more to do, but I did all the basics. I do have acrylic uh, glue and you can also use super glue or CA, which, uh, you know, I happen to use this kind and I love it. And it works on so many things. Downside is that you kind of really want to uh, scratch the two surfaces that you are going to glue together that are acrylic, because if they're, if they're not scratched, a lot of times you're not going to get a good adhesion and you're going to be able to pull it apart. And 
when you're putting a clear, a lot of times you're not going to want to scratch that up because you want that reflection to look good. And so you can mess around with it. If you're going to do a semi-transparent, it may just be fine. Uh, it's also a lot more pain to glue things together. Let's be real. You got to get it perfect. Now, when you use acrylic to, uh, or you use like a CA glue to glue two pieces of acrylic, a lot of times when you bond that sucker, it ain't moving. <laughs> so you got to be really careful about making sure you do it right. So with this technique, when you cut it, you are done. Well, sort of. Let me get to that. In fact, let's just get to that now. I made some videos on this, uh, you know, showing you it, how it cuts and everything. What I did first is I just slapped down two pieces of acrylic. I taped part of it because I wanted to get a good bond, which is a good idea. And then I put some magnets on there just to make sure that it's good and cinched. And that's probably one of the most important things. Obviously, you want the paper to be off of the sides that are sandwiched together or it won't work. So you need them sandwiched together. You need them clean. That's one of the mistakes I made already on the gold that I did is that <laughs> I had previously used the gold, so it had some dust on it. So of course, any of that dust is going to be here in the acrylic when you glue it together or when you weld it together. So now this forever has dust implanted in there. Maybe that could be useful for some things. But that is something that you need to think about. And you want it to be just flat, flat, flat. So any curves, any gaps, anything like that are going to ruin this. Another thing is you are going to want to let it dry. Now already in one of my pieces, I tried to pull it out uh, right after it lasered. And I did that for a reason I'm going to tell you in a minute. And it was, you know, I could move it back and forth. But then I just let it sit for a little while and now it's completely solid. I can't get it apart. So when it's first lasered, there is a, a little bit of waiting time because, yeah, it's still not quite, uh, it's still in a molten state a little bit. So you're going to want to let that uh, settle. Uh but I just slapped down those two sheets together, taped them, put some magnets on it. It was super flat and I knocked it out. What I didn't think about was, okay, the shape that I cut out is all glued together now, <laughs> but so is the rest of my sheet. <laughs> so I panicked a little bit and uh, pulled them apart really quick. Uh, so that it wouldn't have, it didn't, it just left a little bit of stick, but it was okay. And I was able to get those two sheets apart. Had I not pulled it out and let it dry, I probably would have had a good hard time. I probably would have had to break the acrylic apart, the two sheets apart to be able to get it, get it, uh, separated again. So what I ended up doing was figuring out the shape that I wanted to cut out, like all the things I want to cut out. And then I made a square that size, so a little bit bigger, and I cut that out. And then I took some tape and I went around the outside, whole, you know, making sure that it was sandwiched really nice. And then I went ahead and cut out my shapes. So that worked a lot better. Of course, it's going to make sure that it's a lot tighter. It's sealed and uh, it was super easy. It worked super well. As you can see with my final version here, it looks beautiful. It's really well stuck together. It is not coming apart no matter what. And uh, I feel really good about it. So I did go ahead and I here, here's actually the two pieces you could see how I have that, you know, taped. There's no way this is not sandwiched. So, and this is the way to go. This is my leftovers now, and it's only this instead of a whole sheet. But yeah, uh, very, very happy with this technique. I will absolutely be using it. 
I tried a lot of a lot of different things. Here's two clear pieces. Well, actually, one green and one clear. I don't think there's a lot of use for that unless you're just trying to make a thicker piece. Uh, it's kind of neat, though. If you look down the side, uh, I don't know if you could see it on camera, but, you know, it does have this glow on one side of it. Could be useful. I think the big thing is just thinking out of, of the imagination. Uh, and there are some things that definitely won't work. I'll get into that in a second, but I wanted to remind you Remembering which side is up or down when you're cutting, especially you're going to be doing a lot of letters. I'm guessing that's one of the main things that is that's great to do. Like I said, a lot of the signs that you see in the malls or uh, just uh, signs everywhere are going to be made with this technique, so it's a good one to learn. Well, if you're doing that, remember which side you have up and which side you have down because you may have to mirror it, right? So double check and think in, in your head, okay, which side is up, which side is down, which way are the letters going to have to face? I don't want to see you make that mistake. I thought of it because um, say you're doing a mirror. Obviously, you always want the mirror side down, always, uh, because when you're, you don't want to be shooting a mirror into a mirror side up, you don't want to be shooting a laser, you know, <laughs> it's just like common sense. I mean, the laser gets to here through mirrors. So if you're shooting another mirror, what's going to happen end up putting a hole in the, in your, you know, hopefully not your eye. Right. So always make sure your mirror side is down. Very important. But on the back side of a mirror is usually a paint or something. So how are you going to make this work if you want to glue to the back side of a mirror another piece of acrylic? It's not going to work because you don't have a pure plastic side to adhere to. So that's kind of a bummer. I really actually wanted to uh, put a piece of clear behind uh, and uh, it's kind of to make it glow from the backside. But since it is um, a material back here, it will be easy just to glue glue two pieces together. So I, just things I wanted to think about. So I had a lot of fun with it. I think it's extremely useful. Uh, of course, you're probably going to want a CO2 laser and... Also, you need enough power to be able to get through all of the layers. What I realized also is that, say, I can cut out a 3 millimeter in one pass without any problems whatsoever. So if you put two 3 millimeters together, you'd think it'd be around double that, you know, and so you just cut it twice at that same power. You should be able to get all the way through it. I found that is not the case. I actually uh, had to go three passes uh, to cut out all of it. It was pretty close at two passes, but it actually took three to do what I would normally have to do in two uh, if it was just a six millimeter piece of acrylic. So just something to think about. Obviously, a little bit of testing goes a long ways before you start doing anything big. Uh, the reason I learned this is I do have a job coming up that I needed to do with this technique. And so I want to make sure that I've got it down. But of course, I'm going to pass those things off to you guys. So like, subscribe and all that. I'll be showing more of this. And uh, I will see once I set up a diode laser Again, just, you know, just for learning sake. It, in fact, please comment. Somebody try it out. There are two pieces of black acrylic and just see if it works in the same way with the diode laser. I think that's useful. And uh, again, if you want to buy some acrylic, uh, I've got a link down below for Craft Closet. You get a discount, uh, free shipping over 100 bucks, all that kind of stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Love y'all.